kind of traditional around here that toward the end of the year, the talks are about what are you doing with your life? What do you do with your year? What are you going to do with next year? You took another orbit around a star. What did you achieve in terms of the pole star, the meaning of your life? So we talked about this chant we did, which is pretty strong. I wrote it a long time ago. I am transcendent. Some people would listen to that and say, well, that's cold. You don't need anything. You don't need anyone. Let's talk about that. If you are needy, you're a taker. I don't care how nice it looks. I don't care how sweet it is. I don't care how you go about it. Need means I need to take. There's no need without taking. In other words, I'm not whole. I need something from you, from the outside, from something to bring into me so that I feel more complete. That's what it means to fulfill a need. That's what it means to go outside yourself and try to bring things in that make you feel better. That's what it means to need. Someday, instead of looking outside and saying, I need things, you will look inside and say, why do I need things? And don't tell me everybody does. That's not an answer. Why do I need things? Why do I feel lacking? Why do I feel scared? Why do I need security? Or I need somebody to stand by me and support me and know that they'll always be there. And you look at it when you're not busy trying to get that and you realize that I'm not okay. Why do you need medicine? Nothing wrong with these things. Why do you need medicine? Because I'm not okay. Why do I need things from outside? Because I'm not okay inside. Well, that's a very major paradigm shift in how to look at things. Because everybody's busy saying it's natural to not be okay. You don't, you don't realize you're saying that. But it's natural to not be okay. Therefore, it's natural to need things. Therefore, it's natural to go out and try to get the things you need. And that's what makes the world go around in it. That's what everybody's doing. They just all do it different ways. Some people do it with flowers and some people do it with guns. But they're doing the same thing, right? I'm trying to manipulate the world around me, people, place, and things, so they be the way I need them to be so that I feel better. I'm not whole, and being around you makes me feel more whole. I don't feel love. Being around you makes me feel love. Therefore, I need you. It's romantic. It's beautiful. But it's because you're not okay. If you are okay inside, you don't have need. Now, let's just jump ahead, and we'll fill it in the middle. Isn't that cold to not need anything? No. If you don't need anything, you're not a taker. Well, then what? If you don't need anything, you express the beauty you have inside yourself and you become a giver. While you need, you're not giving, you're taking. Even if you're behaving a certain way so that your significant other loves you more, you're taking their love. You're acting in a way that will make them behave in a way that makes you feel better. I know it's not nice to talk like this, but that is taking. It's nice taking. It's not harmful taking, but basically when you're whole inside, and you feel complete inside, and you feel joy inside, and you feel love inside all the time, you express that joy. You express that love. You express that beauty. And everybody you're around, they can feel the difference. I say right now, you know when you're around someone who's trying to take, you feel it, don't you? You just feel the pull, grabby for one degree or another. Do you know that when you're around somebody who's whole and complete within themselves, there's just this feeling of beauty and love emanating off of them, and they're just a giver. Their purpose of their life is not to fulfill what they need. It's to serve. It's to help. If I have tons and tons of food and I don't know what to do with it, I'm not giving food away. I don't need it. I can't call that giving. I'm allowing to serve what I have to others. That's how a being who has transcended need naturally behaves. They're not told to. It's not a religion. When you become whole and complete within yourself, which means you feel love all the time, spontaneously, naturally, unconditionally, and so much also for inspiration and for beauty and for creativity. They're just always there. And don't you dare doubt that they can be. They're always there and there is no need. So now every place you go, you're giving. You're emanating beauty, you're emanating creativity, you're emanating music, you're emanating love. You're just emanating that. And if people don't want it, that's fine. If I have all this food and I don't need it, you're welcome to take it. If you don't want to take it, fine. 
you know, feel insulted. Oh my God, he didn't take my, he, he didn't accept my love. No, it doesn't make any difference. It's free of charge. There's no conditions. It's unconditional. That's the difference between a needer and somebody who has transcended needs. So everybody's gone beyond that. So now I said, we'll fill in the gap. Can every single one of you and every single person that ever lived, a human being, is capable of reaching a state like that? Completely, absolutely true. Whether they're in prison, they're absolutely capable of reaching that state. Whether they did some terrible thing early in their life, they're perfectly capable of reaching that state. It has nothing to do with where you are. It has nothing to do with what you've done, ever, nothing. You are whole and complete within yourself in your natural state. That's what the Bible, the Old Testament, the Old Testament talks about being in the garden. That's in the garden. You're whole and complete within yourself. You have no needs. Everything's just amazing. You're just taking it all in. You're going through the experiences of life, and you're just blissed out all the time. It's just an amazingly beautiful experience. So everybody, that's their natural state. So the question becomes, how do you bridge this gap between how we are as humans which is extremely needy. The richest people in the world need the market to go up and not down. Do you understand that? I mean, I know some billionaires, and I'm telling you that if you were number one on the Forbes list of the richest man in the world or woman, and you're number two this time, it hurts you, it bothers you, you need to get back to number one. What is that telling you? It's telling you there's no end to need. There's no end to it. Temporarily, you can feel kind of, okay, but it doesn't last. Why? You're not okay inside. Something from outside cannot make you okay inside. It can only compensate for the fact that you don't feel whole inside. It's a question of taking from outside, bringing the energy. There's energy. People have energy. Things have energy. Cars have energy. Everything has a vibration. Buddhists say everything has its nature. You can get blissed out on a car. A beautiful car. You just look at it and just bliss you out if you're into cars. So basically, things, anything has a vibration. It depends how open you are to it. And it can bring in temporary beauty and love. Things temporarily open you. Things open you. When you're open, you feel fulfilled. You feel wholeness. You feel well. And so basically, that is what the outside is doing. The energy of the outside depending on whether you open or close to it, let you feel more whole inside. That's called conditional well-being. That's not transcendent. That's the opposite of transcendent. You now are conditionally okay, and therefore you belong to the world. You belong to it. It has to be the way you want it to be, or you don't feel well. And if it's the way you don't want it to be, you feel terrible. And if it is the way you want it to be, you feel great. So now you have to go out there You have to manipulate every person, every situation. You have to make sure everything's okay. You have to make sure people think nicely about you, that they accept you, they're not saying bad things about you, that they think you look okay. Oh my God, it is a lot of work. Why? Why do you need it to be a certain way outside? What's it got to do with you? You're in here. That's when you start to understand what's going on. You're not okay in there. Therefore, you need things from outside to match what you think you want and and not match what you don't want so that when it comes in, you feel better. And you then run your whole life like a hamster on the wheel to try and catch that, but it never happens. Check your parents out, check your grandparents out, check out the richest people in the world, check out the president, check out every single thing you want. They're running as fast as they can, all of them. Check out your actresses and actors, no matter how successful you are, that result is, it doesn't matter what you look like, it doesn't matter how popular you are, it doesn't matter how rich you are, it doesn't matter who you're married to, it doesn't matter. You're worried. If you need it, you're afraid of losing it. If you need it and you don't get it, you feel disappointed and you feel jealous of other people that did. If you need it and you do get it, you're afraid of losing it. And the more you need it, the more you cling to it and try to set up conditions where you're sure you won't lose it. So you honestly catch on, this is what needs do. So you either decide for your pole star of your life. I did good this year because I ran as fast as I could and I took care of this and I checked off this on the bucket list. I've told you before, give me your bucket list. There's 12 things in your bucket list. That's only because you're aware of those things. How many things are you not aware of that would be on your bucket list? 700 billion. Like in the old days, nobody wrote on a bucket list, I want to go to Mars. 
I want to land on the moon. I want to fly up, you know, with Bezos or somebody and experience weightlessness. No, but now it would be. What are you missing? What are you not experiencing all over the world, all over everything? So this is so silly to say, you don't want to miss things, you're missing everything, or to sit there and say, I have to get what I want before I die. It's so silly. So you wake up and you realize, I'm running as fast as I can after what? Nobody wins. It's not true that he or she who dies with the most toys wins. They die. And the toys stay there, and either they rot or the people steal them, or they leave them for their kids who didn't even want them. What kind of win is that? What did you do with your life? And so as you circle the sun, I'll keep going back there, as you circle the sun every year, and you say, how did I do running after what I'm trying to get? You better take another look, because nobody's ever gotten it, nor did it ever last. One of the laws they teach you is the law of diminishing returns. That's an economic law. The law of diminishing returns. What does it say? The more you get it, the less you want it. Keep running. Keep running. Because that which turned you on yesterday is going to turn on a little less today. When you have that brand new car and it smells new and you're showing it off to everybody, man, that is a bliss city to go to that car and show it around. What if you show it to everybody, you had it for a year, and it squeaks a little bit? How you doing? You bliss out every time you get in it? Not a chance in the world. So you're playing a losing game and you don't realize it. That's why you have to run so fast, because it's not taking care of the problem. It's compensating. If I keep running, if I keep doing new things, I feel a little bit better, but I got to keep working at it. How about you? And the answer for everybody, I know you. Why? I don't have to know you. The answer is yes. Why? The outside cannot satisfy the inside. All it can do is temporarily compensate for what's lacking inside. It cannot fulfill what's inside. Here, Get married and have a beautiful relationship for 10 years and then have them leave you or die or go with somebody else. How you doing? I was better before I met him. I can't believe how much I hurt. I don't feel any of the love that I used to feel. Oh, I see. So it really worked, didn't it? As long as it's what you want, it works. You want this beautiful relationship. It's going to fix everything. Oh, my God, it fixes everything's wrong with me. I've never felt this much love. I feel like a new person. Okay, you've had it for five days. Okay, I'm taking it away. Well, I thought it fixed you. Well, no, I need it. It did not satisfy that need. It compensated for the need. It is still there. It's there. You just take off the compensation, and there it is, a raw wound. Who's willing to talk so honestly? If you want to grow spiritually, you better talk honestly. So you come down and you realize, is there an alternative thing I can be doing? Because otherwise, you admit it, I don't feel good inside. I don't feel whole. I don't feel worthy of love. I don't feel successful. I don't feel my life has tremendous meaning, right? People got all this stuff going on in there, insecurities and shame and guilt and all kinds of stuff based on the past and things they've done or didn't do and so on. So how can I deal with this other than running away from it, other than staying so busy with things that distract me, that distract me from myself? which includes everything you do outside, so that I don't have to deal with this inside. And then I said, I feel better. You do feel better, but it's not fixed. So the alternative is called spirituality. At least that's what I call it. The alternative is to sit there and say, if I'm not okay inside, let's fix it. It's fixable. Look inside, see where the lacking is, where the trouble is, where the darkness is, and work with it. Find out why it's that way instead of finding out how to compensate for it and keeping it in there. Then you're not running. Then you're sitting. You stop for a minute and you look in there and you say, why do I feel lonely? Why do I feel insecure? Why do I feel this lacking? Why do I feel there's no meaning to my life? You know what the meaning of life is? I'm going to tell you right now. The meaning of life is the experience of life. What's the meaning of Disney World? You were supposed to experience the rides and the people and the flowers and Mickey Mouse and all these different things. It was supposed to bring you joy. The meaning of Disney World is the experience of the event. The meaning of life is the experience of life. That's why you took birth. That's why you're here. And that's why you go through all these different Disney World-like experiences. There's lots of different experiences in Disney World. There's lots of different experiences in life. How many? Oh, my God. How about every second of your life? There's a different experience. Every single moment is different, isn't it? 
the meaning of life is the experience of life. And you get a certain number of years to experience it, and that's a lot of experiences. And all you do is complain. You think the meaning of life is getting what you want. You know you do. The meaning of life is getting what I want and avoiding what I don't want. No. If you're whole and you're happy, you go here and you experience life, all of it, every second of it, all the weather and all the people and all the foods and just everything there is. It's unbelievable. Everywhere you look, there's thousands of things. And then you go look somewhere else, look to the left, different, look to the right, different. Are you kidding me? It's a phenomenal experience. No, it's not. Why? Because I'm not okay inside. And the only part of life that I want is that which makes me feel better. Have we got it now? And the part of life I don't ever want to have is the part that makes me feel worse. So because you're blocked inside, because you have this problem inside that you're not doing well, you can't do life for the purpose of life. You have to limit it to what you want and what you don't want. Now you come down to what do we do about this? You look inside once and for all. What do you see? Am I okay? Why are you not okay inside? That's all I want to know. That's all I want to work on. I don't want to compensate for it. I don't want to explain it. I want to find out, is this my natural state that I'm not okay inside? No, it's not. Your natural state is ecstasy. Your natural state is completeness, wholeness, abundance at a level you can't even imagine. So much enthusiasm, so much energy, so much love, so much clarity and inspiration. That is your natural state, period. Then the question becomes, so why don't I feel that? Now that's a serious question. The reason is, when you have disturbing experiences in your life, do you like that? What do you do with them? You suppress them. I don't want to think about them. I don't want to talk about them. I don't want them to have happened. That means you push them away. You store them inside yourself. If you're going to store all the disturbing experiences you've had in your life, what's it going to be like in there? Disturbed. You don't need any more teachings. It's that simple. If you collect food that made you sick and have it on the menu, you're going to get sick. If you collect stuff that bothered you inside of you, it's going to bother you. And it does. It comes back up when you're sleepy. It comes back up when somebody's talking to you, reminds you of it, yes or no. It keeps getting hit and it's stimulated and you have to struggle to get away from it or go for vacations and go for drugs or alcohol, whatever it is. You have to try and get away from yourself because you're not doing okay with yourself. Why? Because you stored this stuff inside. I don't want any more metaphysical discussion or philosophy. I don't like that stuff. I don't need that stuff. It's pretty straightforward. If you store inside of you everything that ever bothered you from your childhood all the way up, including today, things bothered you. Somebody said something. Now what happens when you see them tomorrow? <laughs> if you store it inside of you, it's going to stay inside of you. Why? Because you're making it stay inside of you. No, I'm not. Oh, what do you do when it comes back up? You've been divorced 10 years and his name was Miguel. And then all of a sudden you're at a party. Someone yells out, Miguel, Miguel, where are you? How you doing? It's going to come back up. And that's why you're disturbed. No other reason. No other reason. You're beautiful inside. You're whole inside. You're filled with shakti and joy and love and light all the time. Except that you shove this stuff on top of it. So now it can't come up. But it comes up sometimes, yes. It comes up exactly when the outside person, place, or thing matches your stuff that you store just right that there's an opening and the energy that's down there can flow. And that's why you feel love and that's why you feel joy and that's why you're inspired by some things, not others. Why do you only feel passion for a few things? Because those things open you. They open you and then you feel this energy flow inside. Which energy? The energy that's always there. But because of all this stuff you have stored inside, the patterns have to be just right to get around that stuff. And then in those situations you feel passion. If you're not blocked, everything... There's pure passion. They have to find your passion. It found you, <laughs> right? I'm telling you, all the passion is is energy that managed to flow. Why? Because of your past patterns. You dated somebody in fifth grade whose name was this or that, and they were blonde and so on. Now you're going to go on a blind date, and it turns out they have the same name, and they're blonde. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. I can't wait. You're not going to meet the fifth grade person. Give me a break. But in you, you are. <laughs> you understand that? It's unbelievable. How can you miss this? You store all these patterns and they're determining whether you're open or closed. And if you're open, you feel passion. And if you're closed, you feel depressed. It's that simple. So the question is, do you want to go out there 
and try to find what turns you on and make sure you keep it and make sure it still turns you on, which means everything has to stay the same. Or do you want to sit there and say, I want to work on myself, not on everybody else, everything else. I want to work inside. I want to get rid of the blockages that are keeping me from feeling passion, that keep me from feeling love. All right, fine. Now what do I need to do? Go back and find every blockage in there. How do I know where they are? They're suppressed and find them and then apologize to people. Oh my God, no. Don't you dare think like that. I'd be so tired. <gasps> There's a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> and some of what, what happens? what happens if somebody's dead that you need to work it out with? Oh my God, I need a medium or something, all right? But I don't believe in that. So, you no, know, no, no. It's way easier than that and much more natural than that. The energy underneath does not want those blockages in there. The Colorado River does not want the Hoover Dam to be there. How do I know? Well, it's been there for what? 40, 50, 60 years? Take down one brick, that river goes through and would rip them all to pieces if it could, wouldn't it? Give it a chance. It's not called a leak, it's called liberation. To you, it's a leak. To the river, it's, oh boy, come on guys, we can get out of here. It's the same thing inside of you. Your blockages are blocking this beautiful flow of Shakti, of energy. It doesn't want to be blocked. It will push them out of the way. It happens every day of your life. Stuff gets pushed up. You're driving in the car, you're doing okay, and all of a sudden this thing comes up, you remember what your mother did, or what your father did, what's oh, your first boyfriend, how he hurt you. You see a sign that remind. what do you do? Boom, push it right back down. I don't want to do all this. I'm telling you, the Shakti, the spirit, the chi down there is going to push this stuff out of the way. It does not want it to be there. It doesn't want blockages to be in the way of the flow, just like the river doesn't. But you will not let it happen, will you? There's no way. If all of a sudden you're sitting there and somebody says something and you feel the insecurity you felt when your father yelled at you, you do something to avoid that. Tell the person to apologize. You can, excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom. You walk away. Okay, I'm doing better now. That's how you deal with it. Do you understand that? I'll teach you how to deal with it, but that's how you deal with it. So it is coming up all the time. It gets pushed up by different situations in your life, and you don't want to. So you're scared of this stuff coming up. And so you resist it. You push it away. You fight it. You avoid situations that would make it come up. Even if they're totally natural situations. You want to go to the party? Yeah. Okay, let's go. We got all your friends together. I'm all excited about it. Well, you know, Paul's going to be there. No. I don't want to go. I can't deal. I can't deal with that. You can't deal with that. I can't deal with the stuff coming up that's being pushed up by the Shakti, by the energy. I can't deal with it. All right, so now you're getting a little taste of what it really means to work on yourself. You don't have to do anything. In fact, if you would not do anything, you'd be fine. All you have to do is not resist, not fight the process, not not be able to handle this natural process of purification that is going to take place. You don't have to go down there and make it happen. Like people write me sometimes, there's a lot of stuff down there. How do I know which one to work with? It's right in front of you. <laughs> oh, but, but this isn't my major one. I don't care. If you will work with the one that's coming up now, where do you see what happens? And then you're actually going to see it's perfect. It knows exactly which one needs to come up. It's like, like pulling a string to unwind a ball of thread that's tied together. You better pull the right string or it all gets tighter. It knows exactly what needs to come up next. And if you can let go of that one, the next thing happens, the next thing happens. You don't have to pay attention. You just don't resist. It, but you're not able to do that. So that becomes your spiritual job. Not finding what will compensate for it, that keeps it inside. Not going down there and trying to get rid of it because it's bothering me. No. Can you sit in there, consciously centered, clear, and say, come on up. Come on up. I don't want you in there. And it starts to come up, and you're sorry you said it. <laughs> Why? If it was stored with pain, it's coming back with pain. Because that's what you're releasing. You're releasing the pain you stored. Well, can I turn the pain into like sweetness? No, no, you can't. You are not able to handle the situation when it happened. Therefore, you resist it and push it down there. Your growth, which is the meaning of your life, your inner growth, 
is to now be able to handle what you weren't able to handle before. It's called evolution. It's called adaptability. It's called survival of the fittest. It's inner evolution. I wasn't able to handle that mommy got divorced and I didn't like having two fathers and I had to share time. And how old were you? Five? How old are you now? Fifty-five. Why are you crying when you talk about it? I don't want to talk about it. You stored pain. At 55, have you been through enough situations in your life to catch on that people get divorced? And guess what your parents are? People. They're nothing else. They're people. And maybe at 40, you got divorced. So that now you can sit there and look at it and say, NBD, no big deal. It's like, fine, fine. I see now that which I couldn't handle when I was five, I can handle now because I've had experience in my life. I've grown. I'm wiser. I've seen. So when it comes back up, can you look at it and say, come on up. I don't want you down there. You don't need to be down there anymore. I'm a different person. I've grown so much. I welcome you to come up. Now we're growing. Now we see. That's the attitude one takes with the stuff they store down there. Somebody, a great master once said to me, it's the pain that ends all pain. You want to deal with the pain that ends all pain? I do. Give it to me. The pain that ends all pain. I would like to be done and have it completely clear and beautiful in there and let the energy flow completely freely. But the price is I have to be willing to deal with what it feels like to have it pushed out of the way. That's it. Are you willing to? And the answer should be yes, I'm willing to. Are you capable? We'll see. And it's okay. What if I fail? No big deal. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's no failure. You do the best that you can, and then you do the best you can, then you do the best you can, then you do the best you can. And over time, here, you don't know how to play the piano. I want you to start with your scales. But I make mistakes. I don't want to do it anymore. The mistakes are how you learn. <laughs> the mistakes when you're playing the scales are exactly what should be happening, isn't it? It's a learning experience. It doesn't matter. If you do the best that you can, there is no failure. There's just learning. You go through life doing the best you can to let go of what's stored down there. You will not do it perfectly in any shape or form. And then you'll look back and say, oh, I could have done better with that. Then do better. There's no guilt, no shame, no blame, no guilt. Just growth. Just this stuff's in there. Of course, it's messy. Why? That's what I stored down there, a mess. I didn't store all the great things. I stored the things I couldn't handle. So now the question, am I able to handle them now? And you sit in there, and that, that to me, you meditate so you're conscious enough during the day to sit in there and do what I'm talking about. Otherwise, it's just what happened on your meditation pillow. And you go in the day, and you say, oh, I want to go back and meditate. I don't have to deal with this. Why well, should I have to deal with this? I want to go, go live in a cave somewhere. No. No, you want to stand right face to face with life and let it hit what you have in there and let it go so that every moment of your life is walking meditation. Every moment of your life is every, literally every moment of your life is spiritual growth until there's nothing hitting anything. And now it's all beautiful and you can give like I talked about. All right. So how do you do that? By practice. Practice makes perfect. You open up and realize, I have stuff in here. How much? A lot. <laughs> a lot of stuff in here. Okay. Well, then when you go through this day, don't put more in there. At least don't put more in there. I can remember literally way back in the 70s when I realized it only takes a moment to store more stuff. Get disappointed, get hurt, and it takes years to get it out. Somebody can say something. Somebody you love, your spouse, say something or do something. And the moment you realize that, boom, it does that, right? And you close and you're weird. How long before literally that is not affecting your relationship in any way, shape, or form? You're not afraid it's going to happen again. You don't resent. Long time. Moment to put it in, long time to get it out. Not me. I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. That's not a fair trade-off, is it? I would rather deal with it now to the best of my ability and have to carry it for the rest of my life and have it affect my ability to open my heart and love somebody or give, whatever it is. It's your choice. You're the only one in there. You're the only one in there. You decide how you live inside. You don't start with the big things. Just little by little, you just let go of the stuff that you used to suppress, that you used to push away. Even little tiny stuff bothers you for no reason. Work with it. Don't let it bother you. 
breathe, relax, as I found. I've been doing this for 50 years. <laughs> I say that and I realize, I must be old. I don't feel it. But basically, what I've learned inside myself is if you will relax through everything, there's no resistance. You can't resist when you're relaxing. Resistance takes muscle. Resistance takes pushing inside. It takes energy. If you relax, then there's no pushing. There's no resisting. But, but it hurts. We talked about that. That pain is childbirth. It's soul birth. And so basically, you just relax when you feel it. If you want out, you got to let go. And so it happens every day. Do the little things first, not the big things. And you keep letting go. And eventually you build that inner strength that sees it's worth it to let go. Because I feel much better on a regular basis. That's because you have more energy. That's because you're not as blocked as you used to be. And it will just happen by itself. You don't have to do anything. That's what I said. I prefer you don't do anything. But you won't be able to. You want to protect yourself. You want to manipulate and control people so it doesn't happen. You're in the wrong direction. If you sit there and say, I'm afraid that this person's going to critique me badly or say something badly about me, good. Good. Let go. Let go. Just keep letting go. You just keep letting go. Relax and release. Relax and release. And it works. How can it not work? The stuff in there is what's messing up your life. And if you stop keeping it in there, it's going to come up. How will I know it came up? How do I know what I need to work on next? It will be in your face. Be here now. Don't worry. It's right there. Just don't fight with it. Don't not like it. Doesn't mean you're going to do well with it. I used the example the other day. You learn how to play tennis. You got a coach. You're very, very good with your forehand. Man, I am amazing. People, wow, how long have you been playing? That's how good I am on the forehand. I can turn my backhand. If you're that person's coach, where are you going to hit the ball? At the forehand? What for? You hit the backhand because it needs to get better. All right? That's how you look at life. You're supposed to be challenged. The coach that's hitting you at your weak spot, don't fire him. <laughs> you keep hitting where I'm not good and I'm embarrassed. People, see, I don't know how to play. What are you, crazy? You can't get better if you don't work at the places where you're weak. And so life is really good at hitting your stuff, isn't it? And by the way, when it's not hitting your stuff, you're afraid it will. You're afraid that something will happen that will hurt you. That will hurt your heart. That will make your mind get bothered. That something won't be the way you want. So you go out there and try to make sure it doesn't happen. No. You open up, you look at what you're supposed to be doing, and you do it. And then things happen. The boss is yelling at you, this happens, that happens, the relationship doesn't work out. All kinds of things happen. And nice things happen too. Things can happen to help you. It works like that. If you let life do it, it will unwind your stuff, your some scars or patterns, exactly as they need to be. And sometimes everything will work out. Sometimes it's like the sun is shining on you. What the heck? What's that all about? It's about it will give you the time of strength that you need so that you have the power to handle the letting go. And someday you're going to see, you'll look back and say, OMG, it was perfect. It was perfect. I got the book I needed when I needed to get it. And then something happened that made me need that I needed to get it. All right? And you start seeing these patterns happening. You say, it's as if the whole universe is trying to help me cleanse. That is the meaning of your life. The meaning of your life is to go back up with less than you came down with. Period. The rest comes and goes. That goes with you. Your inner growth stays with you. And so basically, you catch on and you start working on yourself. You're doing serious work on yourself. This is serious work. You don't have to pay anybody, but it's okay to have help. Any way you're doing it is fine with me. As long as you're not spending your entire life trying to compensate and avoid what's going on inside of you. At least you're sitting here saying, I understand the meaning of my life is to not put more stuff in and let go of the stuff that's coming up. And the more you do it, the more you'll come in harmony with the energy that's causing all this to happen. And it will raise you. It will raise you at a level you couldn't even possibly imagine. All this shakti, joy, rushing inside of you all the time, going through all your centers, pouring. That's who you are. You're a being of light. You're a being of greatness. And you bother to block that. Well, how about we let it go? Not we unblock it. That's not your job. I made your job really easy. I said, don't resist. That's your job. Don't resist. Don't resist what? The natural process of purification. But it doesn't look like that, does it? It looks painful. It looks like life not liking me. God doesn't like me. God doesn't like me. How can he be doing things? He keeps taking away from things. It does like you. 
the Yogananda, great master, came to America back in the late twenties, early thirties, and he used to tell his disciples, and they come to him, read my stuff. Other stuff's fine, but you got to be focused. And all our teachers teach a little different. So read my books, write this, and so on. Except for one book, one thing. It was a poem called "The Hound of Heaven." Somebody in England wrote it. All right, it's a big, long poem, and what it's about is. That this guy's running down the corridors of his life, trying to avoid what we just talked about, trying to avoid getting hurt, trying to avoid the darkness, trying to avoid the bad times, and he's running, he's yelling at God constantly. That's the hound of heaven. It's chasing him, and he yells, "Why are you chasing me all the time?" And in the end, all I care about, and I read it periodically every year. The last paragraph it says, "I'm cornered. There's no place to run. I've avoided you my whole life. I've run from you. Now you've got me cornered." And all of a sudden, he says, "Oh my God! Could it be the darkness that I've been running from my whole life was the shadow of your hand reaching down to pick me up? That's what's happening. Life is your friend. Life is your best friend. But you got to be willing to go through the growth. You understand that? You got to be willing to go through what it's putting you through. It's a washing machine, and it's trying to cleanse you. You think it's trying to hurt you. It's not trying to hurt you. If a coach pushes you real hard, quit." No, what do people go through for the Olympics? Huh? Four years, isn't it? Four years of absolute hell, pushing their body, pushing everything completely. And what do they get? If they're lucky, they get a gold medal. You put yourself through this. You'd be willing to go through this growth. It changes your entire being. It never goes away. It's the thing that doesn't diminish. It increases all the time. It's a joy that keeps growing, no matter how much you feel it. It's not like you ever felt it before; it's ever new. So, I mean, the rewards are ridiculous. Why am I talking about this? Because it's about to go into the new year, and you get to make some real vows. So, we start the new revolution around the sun with a pole star, a guidance, a commitment that my life is about not begging and doing this and trying to get stuff to make me feel better. It's about letting go of why I don't feel good. And I'm going to do that every moment of my life.